Yeah, it is uh, coming. It take time, not like uh, us. It's slow. <laughs> and brothers, if you want to uh, share in the Facebook, you go Albayan Arabic Foundation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Four brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair for coming today, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our attendance today and our good deeds. Before we start, inshallah, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Sheikh Jamil Abdul Hussain uh, to recite for us a uh, uh, part of Surah Maryam, please. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ انتبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا فاتخذت من دونهم حجابا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سويا قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا 
قال إنما أنا رسول ربك لأهب لك غلاما زكيا قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أك بغيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا فحملته فانتبذت به مكانا قصيا فأجاءها المخاض إلى جذع النخلة قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا فناداها من تحتها ألا تحزني قد جعل ربك تحتك سريا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مريم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرأ سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا صدق الله العظيم The translation um, is as follows, inshallah. And mentioned Maryam in the book when she withdrew from her people to a retreat looking east. And she had chosen seclusion from them. And we sent to her our spirit, the angel Jibrail, in the likeness of a well-formed man. She said, I seek refuge in the most beneficent, Allah, from you if you fear Allah. He said, I am only a messenger of your Lord. I am here that I might give you a pure son. She said, how can I have a son when no man has touched me, nor have I been unchaste? He said, thus shall it be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me. And this is so that we make, make of him a sign for mankind and a mercy from us. And it is a thing ordained. So she conceived him and she withdrew with him to a remote place. And the pangs of childbirth drove her to the shelter of a palm tree. She said, would that I had died before this and been utterly forgotten. Then he, the angel, called to her from below her, saying, grieve not. Your Lord has caused a brook to run at your feet and shake the trunk of the palm tree towards you. Ripe dates will fall upon you. So eat and drink and be consoled. And if you meet any person, say, I have vowed a fast to the merciful and may not speak today to anyone. Then she brought him to her people, carrying him. They said, O oh, Maryam, you have done a strange thing indeed. O oh, sister of Harun, your father was not a wicked man, nor was your mother unchaste. She just pointed to him. They said, 
How can we talk to one who is in the cradle, a little child? He spoke, saying, I am a servant of Allah. He has given me the scripture and has appointed me a prophet and made me blessed wherever I might be and has enjoined upon me prayer and the giving of alms as long as I live and has made me dutiful towards my mother and has not made me arrogant, unblessed. Peace on me the day I was born and the day I die and the day that I am raised alive. Salakullah al Before we start, inshallah, I'd like to ask uh, Sheikh Ismail uh, to say something about uh, his organization, Al Bayan Arabic Institute, who has allowed us to have these uh, talks, inshallah, on a monthly basis, if he's okay with that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm not taking maximum two minutes, inshallah. First of all, I would like to remind you beautiful uh, hadith, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْعَانَ وَعَلَّمَ The best among you, the one who learned the Qur'an and teach it. So Al-Bayan Arabic Foundation founded six years ago with the aim learned Arabic to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say Surah Baqarah starting A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Alif Lam Mim Dhalika Al Kitab Allah Riba Fi Hudan Lil Muttaqi And if you listen this one Hudan Lil Muttaqi Guidance for the pious people Those pious people are the one who learn the Quran and they practice it So the teacher here we are saying the best among you the one who learn the Quran is you all you have the duty to learn the Quran. When I say the learn the Quran, it's coming to my mind and your mind, Paratwe recitation without understanding. Isn't it? Yes, everybody agree? If I'm thinking this way in the Arabic world, totally different. Learn the Quran and teach it me. You understand the Quran and teach the teachings of the Quran. So it is the struggle between learning just reading the Quran and understanding the Quran in this country, especially in Leicester. Six years of experience, I can see many people coming for Quran, not for Arabic language. The reason, the social impact. That is the reason. Because if you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks from you, you will obey from his thought. And this is the reason Al Bayan Arabic Foundation always saying our first priority to teach Arabic language. So it is a struggle, Alhamdulillah. I'm going to announce now, inshallah, we have five staff from Madina Munawwara. We did not announce before. The reason, Alhamdulillah, we need to know how long they're going to be with us. Alhamdulillah, last four months they are with us. Inshallah, they're going to remain with us. This is the best opportunity for your children. And also I warn you and your children. November, I kicked out 12 children, the recent behavior. And uh, you know, if you are thinking about the money, these 12 children, if they are here, it is money for me. Why I am kicked them out? Because not for money. I am here to teach the children something better for them and the society. So it is a struggle, Alhamdulillah, we have eight staff all of them are speaking English, is speaking Arabic. All of them have the Ijaza, all of them have the knowledge in Islamic theology. So I don't need to explain more and more. Inshallah from January we will open the more new registration. We will say first come first sale. And we have only 90 space. Already we have 65, another how many? 25. So after 90 we don't need to open the door again for the children. The reason everything has a quality. We try our best, inshallah. So, one of the things we try to do here, in this, uh, inshallah, Dr. Akib will explain. I find it difficult to talk to the children and the parents. And this is the platform I want to bring the children, especially youth and the parents together. Something we can talk, this topic they can start at home. Very easily, because they heard from the chef, they heard from the expert what they do, what they talk. Then, inshallah, for you parents, very easy for you to start this conversation. This is the reason, alhamdulillah, monthly base. 
and I know Sri Lankan society, they know uh, Brother Farid Mia for last three years. Am I right? Yes. But the schedule wise, he was a very busy man. Even if I ring the phone, very harder to pick him. Yes, but Alhamdulillah, we got the reply. So he gave us the chance every month he's coming. So this is for me and you, the best chance. Because he has the experience with the children, youth worker. So we can't find many youth workers, they are linking the reality with Islam. So I am, when you normally want to, the people who wants to link the reality with Islam. This is very important because the children goes to the real world and uh, we are like a uh, nobody practicing Islam people are in another world. So there is no link. So Alhamdulillah, Brother Farid Mia is a uh, blessed for us. Inshallah, we will take his advantage, Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair for this opportunity. Um, inshallah, um, we intend to have these talks uh, on a monthly basis, inshallah, and you might want to take out your diaries and put the date of the 20th of January, because that, inshallah, will be our next uh, talk, 20, Sunday, 20th of January, inshallah. Um, brothers and sisters, so why are we having this talk today about uh, Isa, alayhi salam? Um, as I'm sure you must have realized, uh, this time of the year is when everyone is talking about Isa, alayhi salam. And everyone uh, is, is doing activities uh, which they believe to be correct. And alhamdulillah, we at this point need to know of what we believe about Isa, alayhi salam. Not only so we need to know, but also to be able to discuss with Muslims and non-Muslims, especially the non-Muslims. Because when they ask us, okay, join us in this uh, event or this event, we need to know how to respond. But if we don't even know what we believe in Isa, Isa alayhi salam, how do we know? How can we, uh, how can we respond to them in the best way manner? So this is the reason why we're having this talk at this point, inshallah. So as the Shaykh Ismail has already said, uh, the brother uh, who's going to give us talk, Brother Farid, he is known quite, quite long, uh, for a long time, inshallah. Uh, just a bit of background for those people who weren't here last month. Um, he's been, in, alhamdulillah, he's been involved in Islamic da'wah for the past 20 years. Uh, a lot of this time has been with the youth as well, mashallah. Um, he's worked in the education sector uh, for over 10 years. Uh, he's a speaker, a khatib, and a, a student of knowledge, alhamdulillah, as well. Um, we do intend to have a small Q&A at the end, so if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask at the end. So uh, I think the talk will be approximately about 30 to 40 minutes, inshallah, and then we will have Q&A. Okay, jazakallah. So I've just been informed that if uh, uh, some of the very young children, if they are causing issues, uh, the, the next door room is uh, free. So if, you want, if the parents want to take the, uh, the very young people, you know, students or very young children across, if they're causing issues, they can do. So the next room is free. Inshallah. I don't know where Sheikh is sending this, but the amount of mics, subhanAllah. <laughs> Last time you were complaining about this. I, I, I never complained. <laughs> yes. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Qala Allahu ta'ala fil Quran al Kareem. Ba'da a'udhu billahi min al Shaytan al Rajim. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَطَهَّرَكِ وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة إلا مريم بنت إمران الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran remember the time where the angel said O oh Mary we have chosen you, Wastafaki, we have chosen you uh, above all the women and purified you above all the women of mankind forever. And the Prophet wasallam said, Fatima, his daughter, may Allah be pleased with her, Sayyida Nisai Ahl al-Jannah, she is the queen of the people of Jannah. Illa, except Maryam bint Imran, except for Maryam. Alayha salam, that she is number one. 
So inshallah in the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, um, we will go through this and I'll, literally I will only be able to touch the tip of the iceberg in terms of the story. And it is so good to see the youngsters here, mashallah, they didn't complain when they had to sit on the floor. They just did what they were told and just sat on the floor. They're not going to mess about, Sheikh. they'll be fine. This guy here though, he's thinking, yo, I, I remember him last time he was sitting at the front and he was also paying very good attention. He just moved away thinking he's going to get picked on, so I'm going to take it easier. But it's so good on a Sunday night before school. I've left already broken up for holidays. One more week, Dr. Arkib is feeling the pain on a Sunday night to listen again. There is incredible amount of ajr and reward for spending time in, le- in learning and seeking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. So don't ever think that any time done sincerely is wasted. It never is. Okay, so it could be this is the deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the sincerity and accepts it and says, right, this is good enough for you to be accepted into Al-Jannah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts in coming out tonight, especially, uh, you know, the children with their mothers and fathers is so heartwarming to see, uh, see this. Also, on a side note, if anyone is cold, Britain is a cold place. I asked the sheikh to put the heating off. Because I thought people might sleep if it gets too warm. So if it does get too cold, please tell Sheikh or indicate to him. I'm sure he will put it back on. Uh, not a problem. Okay. The story of Maryam and Isa, alayhim salam A family in the service of Islam. Why are we talking about this now? Because you know what? It's Christmas time. And in Christmas time, like Sheikh said, our children, they go to schools. They go to colleges. They go to universities, they see it on the TV, they see it in the catalogue, you see it on the Argos catalogue, you see it on the toy catalogue, you see it on the adverts, you hear the songs, you go to the supermarket and they're playing Christmas songs, you go to the shopping centre, they're playing the Christmas songs. Before you know it, you're humming it yourself, na'udhu billah. Because even as kids myself, I grew up, I went to a Church of England school when I was younger and I used to, I used to know all the songs of by heart. And even to this day, you nowadays you get nasheeds that have got the Christmas tunes, but with Islamic words, so even that tune is still there. So Christmas, this time affects everyone. And we have the true story. This is the beautiful thing. We, as Muslims, we have the true story. The versions that have been given, I'll give you an example. Within a, the first 200 years of Isa alayhi salam passing away, there were more than 21 versions of the Injil, 21 versions of the Bible. And what happened was because there were so many versions, the council at the time, they decided to have a vote. We're going to select the best three. And then they had a vote, not based on the strength of the the Senate and the Isnad and how true the reports were, but they had a vote, which version shall shall we accept? And they decided on three versions of the Bible. And you think, by pro, they had a vote to decide which one was the true one. Whereas we have got the version given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, 1440 whatever years ago, it's never been changed, not a word out of place, not a letter out of place, not a haraka out of place. We have the correct version. This is the first lesson for us. We need to go back to that and understand it properly so that when we are asked about it or when people say, so what are you doing over Christmas? Well, I believe in Jesus more than you. I believe and I love Isa alayhi salam more than you ever can. And astaghfirullah, you hear, you know, amongst uh, many non-Muslims, they use Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, as the brunt of their jokes. They make jokes about him. So, you know, when something goes wrong, they go, oh, I'll show you what I'm saying. But they say, oh, Jesus Christ. This is the kind of, the way they use his name. Ma'adullah, astaghfirullah al We as Muslims would never say that. Because we love him. We treasure him. We honour him, we listen to him, we hear the stories. This is central to our belief. And even our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said he had a special love for Isa alayhi salam. Why? He said, Laysa bayni wa baynahu nabi. Because between me and, there's no other Prophet between me and him. He is my closest brother in prophethood. So as Muslims, the first thing we need to love and understand and respect this story from the Quran. 
Not just Isa alayhi salam, but his mother as well. This is something we all need to learn. So kids today, if you get tired through my talk, that's my fault, it gets boring. But go home, learn about the talk, learn about Jesus, peace be upon him, learn about the true version of events, so that when you are asked about it, you can explain it. You can explain what, why we don't uh, celebrate Christmas. Not as if we're being antisocial or anything, it's just we've got a different belief. We view our story in a completely different way. So this is the first thing. And it's very important. I love the fact that there's children and parents here. And I've got to share a personal thing here. I don't know about you parents in this room, but I am constantly tired. You know, looking after these children, even at Dr. Akib's age, mashallah, it's hard work. You've got to still remind them to pray. You've got to remind them to tidy their stuff, do their homework, clean their bedroom, take them here, take them to the mosque, clean their, if they're babies, clean their nappies, give them baths, do all these things. You've got to work day and night for them. I hope my children are listening at home. I'm tired, kids. You've got to work for you all the time. It's like hard work. But you know what? As parents, we do it lovingly. We do it lovingly. I do it lovingly. I don't okay, it's fine, it's hard work, but I love them. But I need to remember my children, who should they serve? Are they there to serve me? Are they my pension plan? So that when I'm older I don't need a pension? Are they there to serve my business? To serve my career? To clean up the house for me when I can't be bothered? To wash the dishes for me? To tidy their clothes? Is that the purpose of their existence? Those are things that are very important, by the way. But is that the reason? And what you'll find is before our us as parents, before our children were born, we were thinking about their futures. We were choosing the best names. Thinking about when, as they grow up, what's the best clothes to get? What's the best school to take them to? What's the best uh, way to teach them Arabic? What's the best way to develop their akhlaq? We think about these things because they're important. But what happens is we get distracted. And rather than us developing our children and our children learning that they should serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serve his deen, we end up serving them, running after them. Taking them to football training, taking them to swimming, taking them to mosques, taking them to school, buying them clothes, getting them a phone, doing this. We end up just serving them. And we think we want all the best things in life for them, but are we giving them the best concepts? Are we giving them the best stories? Are we giving them the best knowledge? And this is something that we need to bear in mind all the time. As a parent of four children, this is, I have to remind myself. Otherwise, I just get lost. And I just want them to have a good, get good GCSEs, get a good job. Just be successful in this world. And we have to remember, don't get distracted. Now, the story of Isa alayhi salam and Maryam alayhi salam has got so many lessons. And I'm going, you know, you have to appreciate. Maryam alayhi salam wasn't just developed in thin air. There was someone, some people, her family that were developing her. It didn't, it didn't just happen. And we, we can't go through the de all the details today. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Quran, he says, Inna Allah astafa adama wa nuhum wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we chose, indeed Allah chose Adam and Nuh. And he says, wa ala Ibrahim, the family of Ibrahim, wa ala Imran and the family of Imran. So even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses this point of family. He stresses this point of family. Um, he himself has told us the family is the most important thing. Children don't just grow up in isolation. They look to their parents. They look to their siblings. They look to their uh, relatives and their network, family network. What are they like? What are they into? What's their personality like? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses that himself. So, we need to remember lesson number one, if you like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself emphasizes the point of the family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes the family's got to work as one unit. Allah didn't just praise them on their own, but as a belonging to a family. 
Secondly, our children and the youngsters here, you guys need to uh, appreciate this. When it comes to your future, we as parents, we want you to become role models for Islam. We want you to live by it. We don't want you to get corrupted by it. Like I don't trust the smartphone with my kids. I trust my children. I don't trust the phone. Because the phone's going to give them all sorts of pop-ups. I don't trust my children uh, with the TV, uh, you know, un unrestricted. I trust my children, but I don't trust the smart TV. Because the smart TV just beams out cover. Like advert after advert after advert. You go to some sites and there's some disgusting things and they put on anything. No, you can't. We have to actively take this uh, responsibility. How do we build our children so that if they face these challenges, if they face these things that are pulling them in different directions, how do they deal with it? And the story of Maryam and Isa alayhim salam, that it teaches us how to hold on to Islam in difficult situations. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains the people who developed Maryam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the story of Zakaria and Yahya. And Zakaria alayhi salam, he was, you know, he won, if you like, the lots to look after Maryam. And him uh, alayhi salam, when he, when he used to go and look after Maryam and go and find her in the mosque, he used to find that there were fruits out of season. So during the winter, she would have summer fruits. During the summer, she'd have winter fruits. And he would ask, how is this possible? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through Maryam alayhi salam said, it's easy for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do these things, not a problem. The reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was unshakable. <coughs> this is like the second lesson for us. What is our reliance like on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I was speaking to one of the youngsters just a couple of weeks ago in Derby. And they were asking me a question. They said, but how didn't the fruits go bad? Where did she store the fruits? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do whatever he wants when he wants. And you know, Maryam alayhi salam thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for providing those fruits out of season. For us, how many times do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having our fridges? Simple thing. We've got a fridge at home which preserves our food. It's stocked, especially after the weekend when you've been shopping, it's full. But how many times do we stop and say, let me just do a sujood for a fridge. Let me just pray two raka, quick two raka. Allah, thank you for giving me a fridge because you're giving me an ability to save my food and preserve it. How many of the youngsters do that? Or actually they open the fridge and they go, oh, have you got none of this? Oh. Complete opposite. Complete opposite. Whereas it should be, we've got a fridge that allows us to preserve food. Make shukr to Allah for that thing, rather than opening it and think, oh, we haven't got that today. It's the complete wrong mindset. So Maryam alayhi salam, second lesson, teaches us that thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his reliance upon him. Next, <clears throat> Zakaria alayhi salam, he... He was blessed with a son. And when he was blessed with the son, Yahya, and again today, Yahya alayhi salam, I can't go through all of them, but when he was blessed with the son, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically why he wanted a son. Again, another lesson for us. So I'm trying to go between parents and children, parents and children, so that you all get the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran. He says, وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِهِ that he said, my wife can't have children. She's too old, okay? Can't have children. Ya Allah, he carries on. So Allah, give me a son, give me a child. Give me a child that will serve you. Not a child that will look after me. Because if they serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will do their responsibilities. Build the child to serve Allah. That is the focus. And actually, Zakaria, when he wanted a son to continue um, and continue his legacy, look what Allah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. He says, Yarithuni, so he can inherit from me, wa yarithu 
من آل ياقوب وجعله ربي رضيا. Let him inherit from me and inherit from the family of Yaqub so that you may be pleased. And he didn't say inherit any sort of material thing because we know the prophets don't leave any inheritance. No inheritance for prophets. So what is he saying? Yarithuni, that he's going to inherit. Inherit what? Inherit the struggle. Inherit the struggle to live by Islam. So the children here, you guys, you youngsters, if your parents are trying so hard to raise you, look after you, teach you Islam, give, keep you in the right environment, your job as youngsters, and I'm talking to the front row here, and front row, your job is serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think, how do I continue what my parents are doing? So if they pray, if you see your mother and father praying every single day, going to the masajid, something you need to continue. If you see them speaking for Islam, learning by Islam, seeking knowledge, something you need to continue. It's not just your parents' job. Something that we have to do ourselves, be brave and strong enough to do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he actually shows us. Allah then talks to Yahya alayhi salam and he says, he tells Yahya to hold on to Islam. And this is what he says. Ya Yahya, khud al kitaba bi quwwah. Oh Yahya, khud al kitab, grab the book. How? Bi quwwah, with power. So in this society, you can't squeeze in um, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib because you're at work. I say to everyone in this room, khud al kitaba bi quwwah, hold on to the book with power. You find it hard to cover. Sisters, in this society where everyone thinks, why are you wearing khimar jilbab? Khud al-kitaba bi quwa. Hold on to the book with power. You get people asking you to do all sorts of things from, you know, uh, in terms of Christmas times, whatever, and you finding it hard. How do I maintain my identity as a Muslim? Khud al-kitaba bi quwa. Hold on to the book with power. Don't hold on to it in a flimsy way, in a weak way. Allah says, khud al-kitaba bi quwa. Hold on to it with power. So you have to take this lesson. Next one, you need to hold on to Islam with power. Because you know what, brothers and sisters? Living as a Muslim in this day and age, it is not easy. Because there are temptations everywhere. There are distractions everywhere. Everywhere. Even today. Today was a big match. For those of you who don't follow football, I apologize, but Liverpool versus Manchester United today. Who heard about the game today, by the way? Liverpool versus Manchester United. Okay, very good, mashallah. Um, I'm hoping there's all Liverpool supporters in here, because I like Liverpool. They won. But the kickoff of the match was 4 o'clock. Okay, 4 o'clock kickoff. Maghrib started in my area 3.54. There were people on the, mus- on the prayer mat. At 3.52, normally they don't pray on time. They're on the prayer at 3.52, waiting. 3.53, 3.53, 58 seconds, 59 seconds. Allahu Akbar. Quick time. Not, they did not want to miss a second. Finish Maghrib Salah quickly. Pray the shortest surah as possible. Get ready to put the Sky Sports on or BT Sports or whatever it is. Because you know why? They've got to watch the match. That is not khuzil kitaba bi quwwah. That is not holding the book with power. That is leaving the book because you can't be bothered that's something more important. Simple things, but we don't realize even supporting a football team, it enters into your heart and replaces the love for salah. Really simple, but it happens. And we have to be careful because the Prophet has said, Ma bain al kufr wal iman, tarku salah. The difference between a Muslim and kafir is the salah, leaving the salah. But if we're not careful, we lose that as well. So we have to be very, very meticulous in how we develop our personalities, how we develop our children, how we think about these things. Now, moving on, because I know I I can't keep you guys too long, but the ayat that the the sheikh recited, absolutely stunning. Surah Maryam is one of my personal favorites. Because of the rhyme in there and the story is just beautiful. And he recited it so beautifully, mashallah. But it tells the story of Maryam, alayhi salam. Now, the next lesson. When Maryam, alayhi salam, was told that she was going to have a baby, the first response was, how is this possible? No man has ever touched me. 
How can I have a baby? It's not. This is crazy. What are, what, are, what are people going to say? I've not been touched by a man. I'm not married. I'm going to have a baby. Uh, this is. How am I going to answer stress? You know, like all the media is, is going to be against her. What do I do? She decides to leave and go away to Bethlehem. We know Bethlehem. She goes away and she decides to stay away from her people. Eventually, when you know, she, couldn't ha you know, she got closer to the delivery time, she, Maryam alayhi salam, felt, start feeling the pain. And when she started feeling the pain, she rested under the palm tree. And when she rested under the palm tree, when she rested under the palm tree, she started going through the pains of labor. And she's crying to herself. By herself, having a baby, no man has ever touched her, not married. What will her people say? She is stressed. Big time stress. She goes to the palm tree, and she actually says, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala relays this in the Quran. He's not making, I'm not making this up. She actually says, "Qalat ya laytani mitu qabla hada." I wish I was dead. Mitu, I wish I had my mouth. Qabla hada, before this thing. How am I going to deal with this? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told her. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala called out to her. No, no, no. You fanadaha min tahtiha that there was a call, and some of the ulama say this was Isa alayhi salam himself. Some say it was Jibreel alayhi salam. But there was a call. Allah tahzani qad jaala rabbuki tahtaki sariya. Look underneath. Allah will provide for you a way out. Now, mashallah, Allah has blessed me with four children. I know. Women, at that point of their life, when they're going through labor, they become hulk, smash, power. They, have, they become really strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them unbelievable, incredible power. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Maryam, alayhi salam, shake the trunk of the tree. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you know, to shake a trunk of a tree, and I know some strong brothers, I don't think many people can get the trunk of a tree and shake it so that the dates fall down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have given her the dates without shaking the trunk of the tree. Herein lies the next lesson. For us to get Allah's help, it isn't just going to happen. You have to do your part. Maryam alayhi salam, that Allah could have just given her the dates and given her the stream herself. Don't do anything. But Allah said, shake the trunk of the tree. It might be symbolic. Just do your part. Do your little part. You take your step to Allah, Allah comes running to you. You walk, Allah comes sprinting. You move one step, Allah comes a hundred. You want victory, do your little part. And Allah will do the rest. So in our time, what's the lesson for us? We want victory for Islam. We want Islam to be represented well. We want to safeguard our identity as Muslims. We want the problems of the Muslim Ummah to be resolved. We've got to do our bit. It isn't just going to happen. We have to do our little bit. Our dawah, our dua, our money, our time. We have to do our part. And this is the next lesson. Now, Maryam alayhi salam, and just on this point actually is a good I always like to share this example. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once, and this is for the youngsters, lesson for all you guys to so pay attention. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once talking to his Sahaba in a room. And he asked them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, he said, which tree is most like the believer? So which tree is most like a believer? Now the Sahaba, the senior Sahaba are there and they're thinking, which tree? It's Arabia, so there ain't that many trees out in the desert. So there's only a few choices. So they which tree? Is it cactus? Is it date trunk tree? Is it, you know, there might be a few pineapple trees, there might be all sorts. But they were all guessing different trees. And the Prophet 
he explained and he said the tree most like the believer the tree most like a Muslim is a nakhla the date palm tree you know why the date palm tree its roots are so firm that even when there's a hurricane or there's a storm you see it like you see in the pictures in America or Storm Deirdre these places the winds are blowing the trees the tree bends but it doesn't get uprooted but a big massive oak tree it bends it cracks and falls down a big massive chestnut tree it bends it cracks it falls down but a nakhla is flexible its roots are so deep it might get blown off course but as soon as the hurricane's off it stands up straight again like the believer you might make haram one day but as soon as you realize you're back straight up again you might make a mistake and forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes but as soon as you remember you're back upright straight again so the tree most like us is the date palm tree it might we might get blown we might get things thrown at us we might do a haram this, we are insan that's normal but as soon as we realize we're back upright again our aqidah our iman is firm deep in our hearts because none of us are perfect let's, let's accept that but we are like the date palm and actually in this gathering is quite funny Umar bin al-Khattab this is for you Dr. Akib Umar bin al-Khattab was with his son in that gathering Abdullah bin Umar and father and son were leaving and Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu he says oh father I knew the answer you know and Umar bin al-Khattab was like sorry what was that say that again and he goes I knew the answer when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said which tree is most like the believer I knew the answer but I didn't want to say the answer because there were the senior sahaba there and I didn't want to make it out that I'm more knowledgeable than them are. so I, I stayed quiet Umar al Khattab gave a good slap so you had the chance to answer a question in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa making me look like a great father teaching you these things and you kept your mouth shut what is wrong with you if you know the answer to something say the answer be brave be confident and this is the message for the youngsters if you know the answer of something sometimes the son knows more than the father believe it or not not all the time but it can be possible sometimes the father is waiting for the son so that he makes him proud makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proud say it explain Islam explain what you know it's a sense of honor dignity pride for the father mother and father say it don't be shy be brave about Islam be confident about Islam stand up for it you should be here you got there's a reason by the way young says we put you at the front soon you're gonna be here standing in front of this mic doing what Sheikh does doing what Dr. Aki does, speaking in front of other people explaining Islam. This should be your goal. Now, when you um, look, continue the story, this is the next part. So, Maryam Alayhi Salam has the baby, baby Jesus, baby Isa Alayhi Salam. And this is beautiful because Allah then tells Maryam Alayhi Salam, you don't need to worry. When you go back, you don't need to worry because this little child this little child will answer so you don't need to uh, you don't need to stress she's like okay fine no problem Dada, I'm not saying nothing I ain't saying anything and they do they actually said in the ayat that the brother recited as well when she goes back they said قَالُوا يَا مَرْيَمْ لَقَدْ جِئْتُ شَيْئًا فَرِيَا What on earth have you done? They said, يَا أُخْتَ هَارُونَ Oh sister of Harun, مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ مْرَأَ سَوْئٍ وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمِّكِ بَغِيَا Your mother and father weren't bad people. How on earth have you had a baby? Know the lesson. Look how they used the mother and father to judge her. So when a child does something wrong, it reflects on the parents. So, if you are not praying Fajr properly, don't expect your children to. If you are not learning how to uh, recite Quran properly, 
Don't expect your children to. If you're not carrying da'wah to other people, how can you expect your children to? Allah is saying, look at your mother and father, how they were. So it's another lesson for us parents. Anyway, parents, you get, uh, you get the messages as well, as well as the children. Now, when she goes back, when she goes back, Maryam says, I'm not talking. The little baby's talking. And you have to picture this. Little baby, just born, maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks, not longer than that. She goes back to her people. And they are shocked. And inshallah, when we all go to Jannah, inshallah, may Allah grant us all there, we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to replay certain things. Because in Jannah, you can ask for things. I personally, one of the scenes that I would like to see on 5,000 inch Ultra HD, the most highest resolution, I want to see this image, this, this like Jannah flicks, what happens in this scene. Because Maryam salam, goes back to her people with a little baby and this little baby says, Qala inni Abdullah. Now I'm thinking, does this baby say it in the baby voice? Qala inni Abdullah. Or is it in a man's voice? Is it in a youth like, you know, strong? What is the voice? I just want this image. Is the baby wrapped up in a little blanket and goes, Qala inni Abdullah. Like, I can't imagine what it's going to be like. But there's a little baby, and the first word this little baby says, "Qala inni Abdullah, atani al kitab, wajalni nabiya." I have become a prophet. I've been given the book. Now, look at this next lesson. The first words, the first words revealed, said by Isa alayhi salam, "Qala inni Abdullah." I am a slave of Allah. Not a slave to Liverpool Football Club. Not a slave to society. Not a slave to what, you know, um, program you watch. Not a slave to uh, Armani and Hugo Boss and all these other labels. Not a slave to any of your mates. Not a slave to anything or anyone. Inni Abdullah. I am a slave only to Allah. We don't need to worship anything else, brothers and sisters. We don't need to worship anything else. Allah is sufficient for us. Qala inni Abdullah. The first thing he says, this should be the last thing we say, the first thing we say, every day we need to remind ourselves of this. Why are we here right now? Because we are slaves of Allah. That's it. Why, we, why do we pray Isha? Because we are the slaves of Allah. That's it. Why do we care for our Muslim brothers and sisters in Yemen, in Palestine, in Syria, in all these places? Because we are slaves of Allah. That's it. This is our life. The purpose of our life is that. And Isa alayhi salam encapsulated that in his first sentence. Now Isa alayhi salam, he, the first thing he said is, I'm going to defend my mother. My mother's not a bad person. So all you brothers and sisters out there, and all, particularly the brothers, the men, the fathers, the sons, the nephews, the uncles, the grandparents. Not grandparents, are you? No, not yet, mashallah. Soon. For everyone, we have to defend... Our sisters. So you know when our sisters are uh, question about niqab, question about jilbab, question about their role. It's our job to explain. For on behalf of our mothers, on behalf of our sisters. Just like it's their job to explain. Just like Isa al-Islam defended his mother. We defend our mothers. We defend our sisters. This is a responsibility for us as well. Now Isa al-Islam and I'll finish with these. I'm not sure. Dr. Akhir said 10 minutes, so I've got... Well, that was like five minutes ago. Is it five minutes now? Yep. Okay, five minutes. Isa alayhi salam. He had many miracles. Okay? Isa alayhi salam and the people at Isa alayhi salam's time, they, had, they were very good at healing. They were very good at all this um, doctor, uh, medicine, all this kind of stuff. Isa alayhi salam was given miracles that was something they could not fathom. He brought the dead back to life. Okay, he brought the dead back to life. He cured the blind with his hands. So we've got a doctor in the audience. 
It doesn't matter. In the future, they may do some laser treatment to restore eyesight or something, but not with their hands. No doctor's going to get their hands and put it on the eye and do it. Miracle. He's uh, fashioned a bird out of clay, blew it, and, let, and the bird came to life. And one of the miracles, and I, there's many you could go through, but one of the miracles that I want to go through is the one where Isa al Islam used to know what was in people's houses. And he used to know what was going on in their houses. And there were two reasons for this. So there would be some youngsters, and they used to make, they used to make fun of Isa al Islam. You're not a prophet. Who do you think you are? And they used to like be sarcastic. And Isa al Islam used to say, I am, I know what your mum is doing right now. They said, No, you don't. And said, I know what your mum is making at home right now. You know, and if it was an Asian example, she's making parate with uh, salon and whatever. And they were like, No, that's nothing. We always make parate anyway in our house. We're Asian. So tell us something we don't know. Because, okay, in your house, in this place, hidden is this amount. And these people would go back home. And they would find that exactly as said by Isa alayhi salam was happening in their house. Yo, this is, this is crazy. How does he know? And Isa alayhi salam, the, some of the scholars, they say there's two reasons why Isa alayhi salam did that as a miracle. Why Allah granted it him as a miracle. Number one, to shut those people up because they were being sarcastic. And Allah said, I will give you the answer. But number two is because even some of the followers of Isa al Islam who claimed to be followers, they said one thing to Isa al Islam to his face, but in their homes they were doing something else. So the message here is hashtag be careful of nifaq, be careful of hip hypocrisy, where you say one thing but you do something else. Isa al Islam say, well, you're saying this, but in your house you're doing this. You're hiding this. You're saying you support me, but actually you're saying this behind my back. So Isa al Islam did that miracle to show them. Now, I'll finish with two, two lessons. One is a warning. Two is good news. Number one, the disciples of Isa alayhi salam, the Hawariyun, they asked for something which the Sahaba never asked for. They said, O oh Isa, please can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send us from heaven, send us a table of food. We want to, and Isa alayhi salam said, Ittaqillah, why? Don't ask for these things. Fear Allah. They said, no, no, no. If you send us this table, we will become even more stronger. Our Iman will get even more stronger. We'll eat from the food of Jannah. We will die for you. Just send us this sign. We'll get strengthened. And Isa al Islam was known as a very loving, soft, compassionate, merciful prophet. And he said, Ya Allah, I feel a bit embarrassed asking you. But Ya Allah, send it down. It might strengthen their hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qala Allah, Inni munaziluha alaykum. I will send you a table full of food. But if after sending this table and eating from this table and eating from this miracle, if you deny after seeing the miracle with your own eyes, tasting the miracle with your own senses, if you deny after that, there will be a punishment which I have never given anyone ever before. What's the lesson for us? Which Ummah has got the last miracle? Which Ummah has got the last miracle? Us. We've been chosen as the Ummah has got the last miracle. If after seeing this last miracle, listening to this last miracle, understanding this last miracle, Living by this last miracle, we decide to go against this last miracle, even though Allah chose us to make us at this time, then we will get a punishment unheard of from previous generations. May Allah save us from this. Because we're seeing the miracle, we're living it, we heard it recited to us beautifully today. That's the issue of warning. Last point the issue of hope. Isa alayhi salam, brothers and sisters, he's coming back. He's got some unfinished business. 
He's coming back. And you know why he wants to come back? Because of me and you. He wants to come back because he wants to be an ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wants to come back because he wants to die amongst us. Can you believe that? There is a prophet of Allah, Isa alayhi salam, who is given the choice. You can go back, go back as a prophet and you're, you're, you die and you go back like that because the prophets are asked permission before the angel Malik al comes. And he said, no, 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 no. I want to go and live with the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What an honor. What an honor. That's us. Who wants to meet? Look, I know it's Sunday night and it's time. Raise your hands if you want to meet Isa alayhi salam when he comes back. Defo. 100%. Because if he comes back, he's going to say, where are these people? My pro the prophet after me told me about, where are they? That's us. May Allah give us the ability to meet Isa alayhi salam in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to die with him upon the truth, holding on to Islam, explaining it to others around us. This is what he hoped for. This is what we should hope for as well. So to conclude, we can't cocoon ourselves. Our families, if we want to live, and we are living here in Great Britain, we are got non-Muslim neighbors, non-Muslim work colleagues, non-Muslim friends, non-Muslim, you know, people who are relatives to us because there are people who are reverts and they uh, have family who are non-Muslim. Our job to explain our view on Isa alayhi salam. Our job to explain this. And for the youth, when Isa alayhi salam was dying because he didn't die, Allah took him took him away. And Allah took him away. Isa alayhi salam before he died, and I'll finish. Young says, listen, Isa alayhi salam was in a room. And the Roman king said, we're going to kill Isa, we're going to crucify him. And Isa alayhi salam asked the room, asked the disciples, who will go on my behalf? No one. No one put their hand up apart from one of the youngsters. I'll go. Isa alayhi salam asked again, who from amongst all of you, who will go on my behalf? Again, youngster. Ya Isa, Ya Nabi, I, I, I'll go. Isa Islam asked for a third time. Anyone in this room prepared to go on my behalf to be crucified? Again, the youngster put his hand up. I'll go. Isa Islam said, Okay, you will be taken. And Allah subhanahu wa swapped and made them resemble his looks. And Isa alayhi salam was saved. And the lesson for us, youngsters, just like you guys are sitting at the front today, the youngsters were at the front of putting their hands up saying, I'll be prepared to go in your place. So you guys at the front, you need to realize how special and important you youngsters are. You guys are the future of Islam in this country. You're the future of Muslims in this country. You need to live by it, carry it, uphold it, celebrate it, show it what it should be like. This is our, all of our responsibilities. We're getting old now. You youngsters, you guys will have to take over and carry on this work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to act upon anything that was said today. Anything good is purely by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything wrong, any mistakes or my own and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for that. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Jazakallah khair, brother Farah, for the enlightening talk. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a tremendous reward. Uh, can I just say Jazakallah khair to Sheikh Abid Hussain for his recitation, to all of you for making the time and effort to come and listen attentively. I know some brothers are listening from the Masjid area as well. Jazakallah khair for listening. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Zakalaha Sheikh Ismail for allowing the use of our Bayan Institute. Just a final reminder about the 20th of January, our next talk, inshallah. Uh, so please put that date in your diaries and keep an eye out on the WhatsApp messages, Facebook, etc. Um, brothers can stay and discuss uh, with Brother Farid afterwards yep. if they want to, inshallah. Uh, can I just ask Brother Farid to make a, a dua, inshallah, before we finish, inshallah.
اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يرجي السلام هينا ربنا بالسلام وأدخلنا دار السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالي ديات الجلال والإكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكينا عذاب النار اللهم إزد الإسلام والمسلمين ويضل الشرك والكافرين والهاكمين والمنافقين والأملاء في بلاد المسلمين Ya Allah, strengthen us in our iman and give us the ability to hold on to Islam. Ya Allah, bless our families and our communities with the best of treasures in this world and in the hereafter. Ya Allah, help us to be able to become role models to those around us, Muslim and non-Muslim, so that they see the light of Islam through our behavior, through our words, through our deeds, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us for our mistakes. Ya Allah, give us the ability to learn your deen properly. And Ya Allah, give us the ability, the confidence, the bravery to be able to represent Islam in a time where there are so many people who are disfiguring and saying bad things about your deen, Ya Allah. Allahumma, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين if you do have the questions, please ask. There's one below who can ask your questions. So if you have more questions, alhamdulillah. I have no questions. <laughs> oh, comment. Okay. That's fine. Comment. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu My name is Nuri Saleh. I'm from Medina Munawwara. Oh, I've been here for a year. My son, Muhammad Madin, is with me. Oh, we really appreciate and very happy to be here. you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, inshallah. And what you have given is very important, especially for the youngest. <coughs> And I hope that uh, everything will be okay with you, inshallah, inshallah. Uh, during your life, inshallah. Amen. Amen. So this is my comment and my best thank for you. May Allah reward you. Wa iyaakum, inshallah. Wa barakallahu fiqh. Any other questions? Any other comments, inshallah? No? Okay, jazakallah, her brothers. Have you got a question? Who is it? For the shaf. If not, just shout. Yeah. for this important event. I have just a quick, quick question to Brother Fari. You know, at school, children are made sometimes, or most of the times, to go through, for example, Christmas activities. What is your advice about this mission? Stand up or sit down. Okay, but the brother asked a good question. Um, my first, and this is um, my first piece of our is this is not about Christmas. <laughs> Christmas happens for this this month of December, and then it's forgotten about. But then after that, there will be another thing. There might be something about Valentine's Day. There might be something about what kind of uh, gender you are. There might be something about what's your purpose in life. There might be something about you Muslims are extremist or uh, terrorist. There might be something about what's your view. Like I heard, a, I was reading a story the other day. They took an eight-year-old boy because he recited Surah al Bayyina. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in, in Surah Bayyina, inna ladin, um, well, Mushrikeen, um, then when, he, when they asked him, they asked the eight-year-old boy, he recited Surah Bayyina and he said, Do you believe when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Mushrikeen and the people of Ahlul Kitab fi nari jahannam khalidina fiha? And he said, um, I think so. And they you know, took his parents. The struggles are not just Christmas. Okay? This is my first thing. The struggle is how do we hold on to Islam when there's so many things and that falls on, and I would say, I can only go based on my example as well. You must speak to your family as a family. Explain these things well. 
sit down with your children, explain them. What is our view on Christmas? Don't just go, haram alayk. This is a way. Christmas, we know. Astaghfirullah, I can't do it. It's haram. No. Explain. We don't celebrate Christmas because we don't believe in the version that you believe. <coughs> and explain what our position on Isa alayhi salam is. And that's the same with every single difficulty that we face as, as a community. We have to take that responsibility and explain. And, you know, I remember only a few months ago, someone was asking, even um, where I'm from in Derby, they were asking, what's the view, what, how should Muslims view what's going on in Syria? It's a difficult question. We have to be able to explain. We do feel pain when, the, when there's things happening in Israel against the Muslims. The Palestine. We, feel, we feel pain. But how do we explain that? We have to explain we have a responsibility. We belong to one Ummah. When they, you know, I remember not long ago when they insulted our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there was books written about him and cartoons written about him. We explain we love our Prophet more than we love our mothers and fathers. We say we don't say his name without saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to build this in our children so they love Islam. Islam is something sacred. And we have to safeguard that in our homes. We have to work for that in our families, in our communities. So my advice is Christmas is just one of those things. You can always speak to the school and say you don't participate. Explain. Like my, I work in a school, the, my colleagues, they know I don't su um, support. They, might, they know I don't celebrate Christmas, so they don't give me, it saves them a bit of money. They don't have to buy me a Christmas card, no problem. But that doesn't mean I'm not nice to them. That doesn't mean I don't give them chocolates. That doesn't mean I don't be friendly with them. That doesn't mean I don't talk to them. Of course I do. I work with them every single day. So there is a way with hikmah and we have to explain these things. As we are, we are responsible. We have to be good examples and make sure that we explain Islam as best as we possibly can. Any other questions, inshallah? There's a question at the back. There's a sister. Um, is this a question from the yeah. sister in the back? Is this a question? Yeah. yeah. Okay, if you, if you have a question. How, so the question is, how do I get my young son to pray five times Salah because he doesn't pray? Okay, sister, is he here? Where is he? Subhanallah, look at this. Your mum's just in front of everyone. Okay. Okay, how do I... You can't force him to pray. I can't force him to pray. But the fear of hellfire could. And the belief in being accounted will. And this is something very... We all have to appreciate this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said... Be careful of the salawat, which are like the pecks of chickens. Meaning you just go up and down. There is no khushu, there is no tranquility, there is no sincerity, there is nothing. There are many people who pray like this and they get nothing from their prayer. And we need to ask Allah to save us from this. My advice to everyone in here, not just the 12-year-old boy. My advice to myself, my advice to Sheikh Ismail. The salah is the miraj, is the journey of the believer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you get the salah right, everything else comes after is right. If you clean yourself five times a day, you purify yourself, you have that meeting and that conversation with Allah, you do get close to Him. But you have that has to come from Him. And I think before I go to Salah, I have to, I will ask, if someone didn't pray Salah, do you believe that there's Allah there? Do you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to account you for every single thing? Because if you don't, that is a massive danger you're going to end up in a place. The Prophet sallallahu described the one who missed one Salah on purpose. He has one haqab in Jahannam, which is thousands of years of unlimited pain unlimited pain and there are serpents that bite and that will punish you that rip you to shreds and then Allah creates you again and at the same time the one who prays once 
sincerely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sins. Now imagine all the things, and this is like amazing. Imagine all the things that you've done bad, and I'm talking to everyone here. Imagine all the things that we've done that's bad. Hidden sins, the horrible ones, the dirty ones, the disgusting ones, the ones that we, you know, we have so much guilt over. On the day of judgment, the one who prays properly, he will be given his book, and Allah will say, look through your book and tell me if I have been fair. Because on the day of judgment, there is no one more fair than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will look through your book and you will find there are loads of sins missing. Loads of sins missing. And you think, Ya Allah, there are lots of things that I've done in here that you haven't included. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, while you were alive, you kept up with your prayers and because of that, I deleted your sins. I hid them in the world, so I'll hide them today. Because you prayed regularly, on time, with the clean heart and you were fearful of him. So my advice to everyone in here, make it, make it uh, normal in your family to pray together to go to the mosque together to pray bil jama'ah in your in your home pray together understand you know i was giving a talk i think it was last month or month before in derby and i asked someone what is the meaning of the tashahud at lillahi wa salawa what is the meaning and no we were in the mosque can you believe this? We were in the mosque. I asked the question, what's the meaning of the tashahud? And they said, uh, don't know. Well, if you don't know what you are saying in your salah, it will be hard to have that love for it. You have to learn what it means. If someone reads Surah Al-Fatiha, again, message for everyone. Surah Al-Fatiha is like a dua. And you're saying, first line, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamd All praise, the praise Everything good in the world All praise belongs to Allah And then you The very next moment You disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala How is that possible? Or you're saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen He is the most greatest And then people, dis- people go against that You can't lie Either you believe that and you work on that belief and you strengthen that belief and you understand it and you learn it and you go through it and that will make you a solid believer. And remember, on the Day of Judgment, there's going to be millions, billions of people. And how will the Prophet ﷺ recognize us? He will recognize us by our wudu. And why do you do wudu? Because you want to get ready for prayer. So on the day of judgment, if you want to be saved, the prayer is the way to save you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to safeguard our prayers because for other believers, there is that is a such a massive, massive responsibility. Okay. Any other question, inshallah? Ah, Sheikh, please go ahead. It's not a question. It's just uh, uh, I'm, I'm very happy. It's just a comment. I'm happy for uh, to start here to give such a uh, um, uh, motivated, motivated answer. And it's just to add to that. As parents, we have opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us something that not anyone has or not everyone has. The power of dua. To add to the sister when she mentioned about the struggle that she goes through with her boy. We find most of the difficult matters 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us answer from the Quran. For example, even the dua, Prophet said, Dua ul walidi waladihi ka dua in the ummati. The dua of the parents who are the child is like the dua, is it, it is, ex, is it acceptable as the dua of the Prophet towards his child, towards his ummah. So it is so powerful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that prayer is something very difficult. It is a long story how prayer came about, salah. Okay, so, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِصَلَاتِ فَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا فَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Because it's something very difficult. Order your people, uh, order your people to perform or to establish prayer. It is difficult. That's why you have to be patient and also you have to be, you have to be consistent. But also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want us to make dua. Rabbi ja'alni muqim salati This dua is in the Quran. Rabbi ja'alni muqim salati wa min duriyati. Rabbana fataqabbal dua. Rabbi ja'alni muqim salati Oh Allah, make me the one who establish regular prayer. Salah. Wa min duriyati and my offspring. Not just your child, your offspring too. All of, all of your offspring. So, uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And when you keep doing that, when you wake up at night, pray two rakah, sajda, you make this dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, inshallah, make the situation uh, better for your son. Inshallah. And uh, I've heard this from many parents, and most parents who did this, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted, and uh, their children were constantly going to the masajid and perform salah after that. But, but when you... And this is for all of us, even when we find our brothers outside who do things unacceptable, instead of quarreling with them, what we do, if we really love them, then we stand up at night, we make dua behind there, so it's like they can't see us. And that is the best dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. When you make dua for a person who is not present, Okay, he's not present with, for, uh, uh, before you. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. So may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who hear and follow the best from what we've said. Uh, there is a, a written question as well. Um, you said it was the young boy who was made to appear as Isa alayhi salam, but I have only heard or learned that it was the companion who betrayed Isa alayhi salam and gave the info to the Romans uh, who was the one who was crucified. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, um, because the, in the books of Sira, if you like, or in the books of the, uh, the stories of the prophets, there are different versions, different versions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his version is the most accurate. So in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Neither did they kill him, neither did they crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَلَكِنْ But someone was made, شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Made to look like him. Now, some narrations and some of the books, they said Judas, who betrayed uh, Isa al-Islam, uh, you know, he gave the information and they came and they took. Some narrations... They say that all of the disciples re resembled Isa alayhi salam and they took the wrong person. Some of them say it was, it was Judas himself because Shaitan had come and taken him over. And then the point is, who actually replaced Isa alayhi salam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself didn't answer the question. So for us, we need to understand the part which Allah says is definitely true. وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا سَلَبُهُ he was neither killed nor crucified. Allah took him away. So in terms of the details, it was, and this is all the lessons. I didn't go through it today, but all the lessons, right? For example, when the table came down from, the, from Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell us the menu, what was on the table. There are some hadith, and I'm, I'm from Bangladesh, right? So uh, Bengali is like fish. And it's well known that some narrations, they say that on this table, there was fish. So as a Bengali, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, fish, that sounds nice. But somebody else may think, eh, I don't like fish. I stuck with al 
And Allah subhanahu this is ilm la yanfa. There's no benefit. Allah subhanahu ta'ala doesn't tell us the menu. Was there chow, was there roti, was there fish, was there pizza, was there kebabs, was there, what was that? It's not, that's not important. The lesson for us is knowledge should be for our actions. What is beneficial for us? How do I become a good father? How, what is the ahkam of salah? What is the ahkam of uh, hajj and umrah? What is the ahkam of uh, being a mother? What is the ahkam of uh, business? What, these are practical things we need to learn about so that we can follow Islam in our day-to-day lives. Whereas the things which are, you know, what, what was the table like? Was it a golden table? Was it a big table? Was it a round table? Was it, what was the desserts? Was it Ras Malai? Was it chocolate cake? Well, it's not important. The knowledge which is important is the one which benefits us in this life and in the next life. Not, uh, you know, knowledge which has no benefit for us. Um, uh, brothers, I, I am aware of the time and I do want you to come to the future, you know, uh, talks as well, inshallah. So I'm going to take one last question, inshallah, and then we will, uh, we will stop, inshallah. Yes, brother, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan for being here, uh, Barak Brother Mia. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, ask the questions from the youngsters, not parents. So you know, you have so many questions about the, you know, about Jesus and Christmas and things. When you go outside, we can hear now noise from your mouths. But here, very calm, good. But the thing is, you have some, you know, even you have some comments. Even they know better than us about the Jesus and you know the yeah. prophet. So you can comment like this event because we are organizing shape organizing for not for us. This is for your your time, not our time. So take the advantage of this Inshallah. kind of thing. And also I ask the question. Yeah. The question is, you know, always as a parent, we are bombarding our advices to the, our <laughs> children, you know. Always I'm saying not don't tell we don't Tell them, you know, good. But always, we are thinking we are in 100 percent. They are in 40 percent. Like you said, uh, dua or something else, we don't know sometimes. But most yeah. of these they kids, they know. Even my son knows. You know, sort to Kahak. You know, crazy. Where's your son? Atif. It, you know, Mashallah. even even there are some half is here. You know, Ashfaq and you know. We know in here. They're all yeah. hiding. Yeah, hiding here. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So they are all talented. So my question is, without practicing us, like you said, without we going to pray or something, we are bombarding these advices to them. What is the impact? I don't know what the impact is, but I know what I would like it to be. There was, a, and this I'm talking from my personal experience. When I was, um, when I was young, younger, still I'm young, mashallah. Um, when I was younger, I used to feel really embarrassed about talking in front of the elders or saying something stupid or making a mistake. And I would feel that bit of pressure. No, I can't. But I used to feel, I used to feel comfortable outside that environment to be able to speak, and that's natural. But one thing that I did find uh, over time, I used to listen and I used to take things on board. And then when I would go away and I would have the confidence or the, the bravery, if you like, to be able to say something, it needed, me, it needed someone to push me. A bit like you try to do there, uh, not so scary, but you know, push, push a person to say, right, do this. So I remember when I first gave a talk, this is when I was like 14 years old or 15 years old, I can't remember when it was. And I w- my legs were shaking, like literally shaking. And my hands were shaking. And it took a while for me to realize, I'm not bothered actually what you guys think, believe it or not, because I don't do it for anyone in this room. So whether someone falls asleep in my talk, whether someone uh, likes the talk, uh, disagrees with the talk, huh, up to you, no problem. For me, I'm doing this because on the day of judgment, Allah's going to ask me, Farid, what did you do for Islam? And I will say, Ya Allah, I tried to spread Islam wherever I went. So I would say to the youngsters, yeah, maybe you might not want to talk now. But what I would hope, when you're with your mates, 
and they're pulling you in a direction, you stand up for Islam. When people are not praying, and they say, oh, Ayub, we'll pray later, let's play first. You say, no. Inna salata kanat al-mu'mineen. Kitab al-Mawquta is written. I'm going to pray. So the impact that I would like to see is not necessarily here all the time. It's quite demanding to speak in front of everyone. Even my own son feels a bit nervous. But I would expect when they're in their own gatherings, when they're at school, when they're with their friends, when they're at the park playing football, they represent Islam. And that's the impact that I would hope. That can they do that? Because that's the start. Remember, you don't just overnight become. So, you know, like maybe it's a lesson for another day, but Salahuddin al Ayyubi, Rahimullah, when he was a little boy, he's, he heard the hadith that there will be someone who liberates, uh, you know, uh, and puts. And uh, he used to always, when the elders used to say, Salaam alaikum, ya Muhammad, Salaam alaikum. And uh, he used to say to them, he said, Say, Salaam alaikum. O conqueror of Quds. They used to say, even you say, it was remind me that when I'm older, when I'm older, remind me, I'm going to take over Al Quds. And when he was older, what did he do? He took over Al Quds. So for us, you know, like um, our parents, let's not, uh, we're our children, let's not give them low expectations. You should be khatib, you should be speaker, you should be ulama, you should be leaders in deen and dunya, everything. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana Give him both lives. That's the impact that we want to see. Yeah? Uh, brothers and sisters, I think we will call that a day, inshaAllah. Uh, have a safe journey home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Yeah, yeah, yeah. 